Hey gang, today I'm fishing out of beautiful St. Petersburg, Florida. I'm with my good friend, Captain Glenn Taylor. We're going offshore. He's the man out there. If I were you, I wouldn't touch that dial. It's going to be off the hook. So what's fascinating to me is that how we have one piece of structure and you can actually fit it, fish it differently and target different species. Yeah, it really is a you neat. Know, right now we're snapper fishing, then we'll change it up to a little bit of amberjack fishing, do some kingfish and maybe some barracuda, but we're on the same structure. Yeah. And that's so cool, but if you target them differently. I don't think everybody fully understands that either. No, they come out, they get pigeonholed. How quick would the be on there? I, I couldn't even believe it. I'm like, yeah, you're bit already. Uh, I don't know that I can, I got a really nice one. I don't even know if I can get this one. Oh, golly, Dave, show me how it's done, Mike. Look at that pig right there. Nice. I got Look colored how shiny deep. He is. Yeah, I got colored deep. That one's going. Oh, look at the one that followed him up. Uh huh. There's oh. more with him, right. Look at the size uh -huh. of that one that's with him. Uh huh. Oh my God. They want to know what Charlie's got. It's a little amberjack, a huh? A little AJ. No well, wonder. I don't think that's an AJ. I it's think not? that's one of those sure banded looks. rudder fish. Uh, is that what that is? I think so. Looked like a little AJ at first, didn't it? What's with him? You know, I can't I can't tell the difference unless you gill raker them, right? They got different gills, about the only way I can tell. I, I don't I don't know. It looks like a little AJ to me, but I I'm sure so. I think that's a banded rudder fish. Okay. Looks like a small amberjack. But I get it. Oh, you got a, uh-oh. 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 <laughs> I got a little something different. Somebody yeah. else decided to join the party. I was going to say, there, there was something following this that wasn't uh, wasn't very small. And I'm Ooh, not sure. Well, oh. Bay, don't fail me now. I'm not worried about the rod. I'm worried about, it's 15-pound spider wire, but it's only 15 pounds. Bringing a knife to a gunfight. I don't know if I'm going to see this fish, Mike. I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to get my jig back. I don't know. We got him on the right. This Cabo is performing flawlessly. Nice drag on it. Man, is that drag smooth, Bubba. <laughs> That's a good fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel the structure. And there it was. Oh. Did you see my rod go boom, 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 boom? Oh. I said, I'm in the structure. And there he went. I Bubba, knew I wasn't going to see that fish. Holly day, that's so much fun. If you're not enjoying this, you better check your pulse, son. <laughs> <laughs> We've run about eight miles out into the Gulf. We've got a little bit of an east wind this morning. It's supposed to lay out as the day goes on. Glenn was out with a charter yesterday and came upon this piece, and it's got kingfish on it, some amberjack on it, some barracuda on it, and a bunch of really nice mangrove snappers. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of work this artificial reef here, and we're going to see if we can catch one of every species today, which, you know, we should be able to do. It's been just really, really a good bite here. It's spring on the west coast of Florida. Everything's kind of active. The water temps aren't too, too high, so it should be a fantastic, fantastic morning to catch some fish offshore. Those mango snapper are incredible. Well, once again, it's avoiding the undesirables on the bottom your spot tails, your short red groupers, your smaller fish. Your larger mangroves are more aggressive and they stay higher in the water column. So it's, it's almost like the whole snapper family is that way because American red American snapper are the same red, way. You get the Christmas tree effect going on. The difference with the American reds and the mangroves though, American reds will eat anything. You know, they're the red grouper of snappers except they taste a lot better. I mean, you're going out, there you go, uh-oh. And now the fun part is you're on the light tackle, trying to get him up before Mr. Goliath says, I want lunch too. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Taking the bull bay rod, bending her right over. Nice snapper. Look at that, dude. Woo! There is absolutely nothing wrong oh, with that. Oh, my lance. Did you get rocked? Uh-uh. He just destroyed it, though. 
Oh. Look at that mango oh. snapper there. Bro, I got Woo. take it to the house. Woo. That was big It's a quarter ounce jig head. These quarter ounce jig heads here, I really like them because they got a one out. It's a one out hook, so it's a small hook. It's easy to hide in your shrimp. And that is a sandwich. Look at that. I think that snapper of mine chewed me off. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Those teeth on there, you see them teeth? Yeah, they got some teeth on them. Using this real light leader, they'll chew right through Watch that 15 pounds. Look at them snapping. See them snapping? Hence the snapper. Now he doesn't want to let it go. Yeah, here, uh, here, lunchbox. That's some beautiful mango snapper. And you know, for me, there's no more you know way of fishing this that's any more fun. And then you get the plus of there's they're abundant, right? So you're not worried about like they don't really get affected by the by the uh, cold water kills or anything like our snook and stuff does. Right. And man, they're they're so fun. And then then they're so good to eat. Well, they're so delicious. I don't think, me personally, I don't think there's a there's a better tasting fish out here yeah. for me, day in Hard. and day out. The snapper are my favorite. If I'm at a restaurant and the waiter says, right. you know, we have snapper, bricotta, whatever it is, right. I'm like, stop, yeah. stop talking. Yeah, you're right. You're good. You had me at snapper. We have uh, grouper now. I'll go back to the snapper. <laughs> yeah, put me in, coach. It's not an acquired taste either. All you got to do is try it one time. Yeah, right. It's so light and... Flaky. Just the other day, my wife and I are eating it, and she goes, my lands, what is this fish? I said, honey, it's snapper. She goes, I like it better than grouper. I said, that's why I married you. You got great taste. <laughs>this week's tip of the week is the Guy Harvey Outpost, a trade winds beach resort. Located on the award-winning white sands of St. Pete Beach, the Guy Harvey Outpost offers casual dining, two swimming pools, whirlpool, fishing, water sport adventures, and beach relaxation along with the iconic artwork of Guy Harvey showcased throughout the resort. For a rewarding family adventure or just to relax, come to the Guy Harvey Outpost for an environmentally responsible and memorable vacation. From the oceans comes life. Enjoy the journey at the Guy Harvey Outpost in St. Pete Beach, Florida. And that's your tip of the week. We've got uh, some live shrimp going down here on a quarter ounce jig head. We've got a, about 15 feet of 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. When you're out here fishing these big reefs, you want to try to keep that fluorocarbon as light as possible, especially for the mangrove, snapper, things like that. If you start getting broke off, you're running into some gag group or some red group or things like that, you can always up your fluoro leader and change it, but initially go as light as you can go. Yep, until the fish tell you otherwise. Right, yeah. Come on, big dog. Come on. Come on, big dog. Come on. Not, I didn't even get to drop a bait. <laughs> oh, nice. Look at the size of those mangroves. Come on, dude. Dude, 15 pound test on a 16 ounce jig head. Does it get any better than that? I don't think And he so. was and hungry. Look, look, yeah, you can't even see the jig head. And see, that's what I'm saying. On some of those bigger fish, when you get bit off, that's what they're doing. That snapper right there will chew and just snap that right off. He'll just bite it off. I mean, look at those canines. <laughs> you don't want them to get near your finger. No, no. But they will bite you, yeah, man. Yeah. Guess what? They don't let go. Painful. No, they don't let go. They hold, no, yeah. they don't like to let go. Such a beautiful filet. Really is an incredible fishery out here in the Gulf. Snapper fishing's just come alive here the last year or two, and we've always had them, but it seems like it's gotten better and better, don't you Well, you, you know think? what I think it is? I think everybody's target is different now since Gag Grouper has been the rock star for so long. Gags are closed, American Reds are open seven days out of the year, and you gotta go 50 miles to go get them on our coast. Right. This isn't the panhandle. Right. You know, so we get a, you know, when you're fishing state, we get five fish. We're fishing, you know, federal, we get 10 fish limits. You can come out here by nine o'clock, have your lemon, and be back. Right. Well, and that's the, I mean, we're close. I mean, we can see the beach. Yeah. <laughs> that's close. Yeah. And catching mangroves like that? Yeah. Ooh. Tell you what, this is a pretty, uh, it's a pretty easy thing to do with kids, too. If you get on a reef or a, a wreck somewhere that's covered up, all we're really doing here, because the fish are kind of chummed up, with some shrimp, we got a shrimp chum line going. 
All you really do is open your bale and just kind of feed some line out. That's all we're really doing. So it's a really easy thing to teach kids. And then once that line jumps off this reel, you feel it, especially with a sensitive rod like this, you feel that fish kind of tap down on it and that line starts to rip off there. All you got to do is close the bale. The hook sets itself and it's game on. There is one technique that I've picked up doing this. When my line is fairly tight, I don't like to go like this and have my shrimp jump back up. I like to pull my line off to what I call the drag-free drift. It really makes a difference. If you're the guy that's got a tight line and it's a heavy line and you're making that shrimp jump, they're doesn't separate. Look, doesn't yeah, look it doesn't natural. look natural. Right. They're eating all those freebies he's well, on right now. And I think, see how he came straight to the boat? He's like, what has got me? Hello. Hello, Mr. Mango. Pretty mango snapper. Yeah. So healthy. The fishery's in such great shape. You gotta be careful on these guys. They ask me, Captain, where can I pick them up at? Where can I touch them? I'm basically gonna say nowhere. Real Animals Tackle Box, brought to you by CCA Florida, the CCA Star Tournament, and Fish Brain, the app for fishermen. In today's Real Animals Tackle Box, Captain Glenn and I are using 7 foot 6 inch, 20 pound class Real Animals Signature Series spinning rods and 7 foot 6 inch, 30 pound custom spinning rods by Bull Bay Rods. We're using Quantum Cabo PTS 40 and 60 spinning reels with 15 pound spider wire ultra cast on the 40s with 20 pound Berkeley Pro Spec leader and 30 pound spider wire ultra cast Invisibrade and 30 pound Berkeley Pro Spec leader on the 60s. We were using live shrimp on quarter ounce and 16th ounce jig heads for the snapper and four aught Nautilus light circle hooks with live pinfish and live sardines for the bigger fish. Real Animals Tackle Box is brought to you by Quantum, the real choice for the real animals. Miralure, the record setters. Ingle Coolers, the first, the best, your last. Bull Bay Rods, combined with original Fuji guides for a difference you can feel. Spiderwire, nothing gets away. Raymarine, go hunting underwater. Dorado Boats, built to last a lifetime. Real Animals Tackle Box, brought to you by CCA Florida, the CCA Star Tournament, and Fish Brain, the app for fishermen. Here's the good news. The good news is it's getting beautiful out. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. How'd it slow down? Yeah, I know. How'd it slow down for you, big fella? Uh-oh, powerful. Yeah, it's slowed oh, down. Yeah. Oh, already. look at that. Good <laughs> lord. <laughs> It's just silly, dude. Come Look on. Look at that. Seriously. Huh? Seriously. Isn't that beautiful? Staring at the beach. Staring at the beach. Isn't that nice? Look at those fangs. Er, er, er. We're using a 20-pound fluorocarbon leader. We're using about 15, about 15 feet of it on these snapper. Seems like a lot, but it's worth it. And if you'll notice, Glenn's been broken off a couple times, but he's able, because of where they're breaking him off, he's able to just retie on another jig head and keep fishing. So it's better to have a little more than a little less. When I'm fishing inshore, if I'm snook fishing, I usually use kind of a long piece because as you catch your snook, they'll chew up that leader and you can just go ahead and change it quick, put another, you know, clip off the bad piece, put another hook on and keep fishing instead of having to retie the whole thing. Same thing out here. And he slammed that oh, on one. Boy. Come here. Now that's a big snapper snapper. Yeah, it sure looks like it. What's oh, that? Oh, Look at him. There he is. That's what's been eating the That them, is what's been eating them, dude. Oh, did you see oh, that? Oh, boy. He was the size of a sofa. Yeah, that oh. was a large Goliath grouper down Ooh. there. <laughs> he was getting chased. I think we know what got our snappers. You know, it's very funny to me that uh, if you talk to some people, they claim to be in the know. I had a conversation with a gentleman who told me that Goliath Cooper only eat lobster. Yeah. They don't eat fish. Uh -huh. well, I got news for you. That's not a lobster. Yeah. And he was coming for it big time. 
Well, you and I did that show last year on permit, and our permit turned into a pompano. Yeah. <laughs> he was skipping across the surface, getting away from him. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that doesn't look like a lobster. No, that doesn't that look doesn't like look a crab. Like, yeah. Well, how do you get that big and only eat a small crab? Uh, don't I know any. manatees get big and eat, you know, lettuce, but there's an exception to every rule. But that boy there is eating whatever he can catch. Yeah. I mean, they're uh, they're opportunistic feeders. That's it. And that one there, you know, back in the day, 10 years ago when we started this show, I'd be wanting to send something down and catch him. Yeah. Oh, he's got to turn around and run again. I'm not that guy anymore. Yeah. I'm like, wow, look how big that fish is. He can stay right there. <laughs> Closed captioning brought to you by Gator Ford. The Real Animals Hook It and Cook It brought to you by Rumfish Grill at the Guy Harvey Outpost. Hey gang, today I'm at the Rumfish Grill. We're on St. Pete Beach in St. Pete Beach, Florida. We're at the Guy Harvey Outpost. I'm with Chef Aaron. Aaron, what are we whipping up today? We're going to make some ceviche. Ooh, nice. Making the ceviche, we're going to use bay scallops, golf shrimp, and some local grouper. Okay. This is gonna be seasoned with cilantro and some fresh mint, tomato, poblano, red onion. This is a secret ingredient here. This is basically the elixir in any ceviche. You're gonna come across lemon juice, lime juice, and we have a little sriracha in there. Okay. What's gonna happen, uh, the pH level of the seafood is lower than that of the lemon juice. Okay. Uh, a little bit of time involved, the lemon juice is going to cook the seafood. So starting out fresh, you can see it's definitely raw. Hours later, seafood is opaque, it's cooked through, it's from the acid in the lemon juice. Okay. Is there a certain amount of time you need to do that? We do it for 12 hours. Okay. We're going to plate this over arugula. We sell a lot of these, they're really popular. Warm weather, cold seafood. So to finish this, Mike, we're gonna use some fresh lime, some lemon, sliced jalapeno, a little fresh cilantro, fried plantains. Mm. Aaron, that looks absolutely fantastic. For this great recipe and more, go to our website. The Real Animals Hook It and Cook It, brought to you by Rumfish Grill at the Guy Harvey Outpost. Starting to lay out a little bit. It is. Well, we're done so early, it's... Yeah, it's ridiculous, 11.30, 11.30. Mangoes and big AJs. On a public number. On a very public number. Yeah. As you can pounded. tell, we've got a lot of boats around us, but it's, it's all about the way that Captain Glenn has approached this piece that's making a difference. We had other boats out here anchored up uh, on the piece, and they weren't catching anything. It's all about that time on the water that Glenn has put in refined his techniques to make a big difference out here. That's why, you know, when we come out here and film shows with these guys, if you're looking to catch fish on the west coast of Florida, if you're coming to Tampa, St. Pete, Clearwater, Sarasota, you want to go offshore, this is the guy right here. Uh-oh. Oh, we got the same. We got the same fish, is that what we got? We're together. I don't think we got the same fish, Bob. No, nope. no, that's you right there. Oh no, well, mine's brawny as hell, apparently. You got eaten. Yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened. You, you got eaten. Yeah, you got me right down in the swamp stand. <laughs> Look at that leader. That leader is chafed up, man. And you know what happens a lot of times with our fluorocarbon, I guess the fluorocarbon is on the outside of the part of the leader, right? So if your fluorocarbon leader gets nicked, you lose the invisibility. And most people just think that fluorocarbon leader is only invisible, but it's way tougher than regular mono. Oh, absolutely. If this was regular mono and it got that chafe in there, yeah. we would have replaced it a while ago. Yeah. But man, is it brace, I mean, it's just. Abrasion resistant, yeah. big, big time. And apparently we've drawn a crowd. Yeah. 
We're very popular. The boats just keep coming. <laughs> okay, TV land, you're watching. Strong back and weak mind. Let's go, Mike. Let's show them, baby. You're the number one recruit. That's right. Hey, it looks like you got this one now. No, I don't think so. He's false sense of security again, I think. <laughs> you got him, buddy. Ooh, I saw color. I got yeah, color. You got this one. I got color. Oh, that's because it's a grouper. <laughs> <laughs> Is that one of them undesirables? Yeah. Woo. Okay, you grouper. caught him on a free line. You think we've got him chummed in out yeah. here? You yeah. Think the, you think uh -huh. the fish are behind the boat? As we said earlier, you get out here on these reefs and you just don't know. I remember our first couple baits out there, I told you, it felt like a grouper that yep. went right to the structure. Pretty, huh? The elusive. Okay, grouper. Do it again, Mike. I'm gonna do it again. You got it in you, man. I knew that. I was like, I got color. This cannot be, it's not the same fish. Nice job getting that in, Bob. Well, I, Cause here you know you're saying it's only a grouper. You know how hard that grouper is to get in on, you know. Well, with everything swimming around out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Pretty tough, bud. Captain Glenn Taylor. Mike. An another great trip. <laughs> it was a lot of fun today, wasn't it? Another great oh, trip, man. You know? Can't wait to do another one with you. The, the action that close is kind of amazing. I mean, dude, we had fish we couldn't even turn today. No, no. <laughs> That's the part. You know, we caught small fish. We caught, you know, hook giant fish, full moon. Didn't matter. You know, I got bit sometimes with my leader in the eye. I mean, my leader was like 12 foot long, but we were actually getting bit when my leader was still in the eye bringing of the rod. Those, bringing those fish, bringing those fish up off the bottom, you know, and had all the knuckleheads driving around us and all that. And they're all staring at us and you're bent over, I'm bent over. And I'm like, what is he doing? Uh, how'd you catch him? In the corner of the mouth. That's right. The best stuff, the best stuff in the world right there. What a great day on the water. I'm Captain Michael Anderson. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm reminding you that whatever you do, don't let your kid be the one that got away.